I find naming characters in my stories or my novels really difficult. It's one of the hardest parts for me. So this past week, I decided to pour some time and energy into figuring out some kind of method for naming my characters. Almost like a science, but without any science. In this video, I'm gonna show you the process and how it works so that you can use it yourself the next time you wanna name a character. The place to start, I think, is figuring out what makes a great character name. Obviously, it's gotta be unique, it's gotta be memorable, it's gotta be original, if possible. But there's something else, there's some intangible quality that the best character names have that I haven't really thought about until this past week. The best names kind of describe the character that they're talking about. Instead of just being a generic tag to differentiate between the characters in your story, the best names seem to add something that brings out the character's personality or complements the, the kind of character that they are. When I was making a video recently, I figured out I'd been overlooking this. I was talking about a character from Harry Potter. Vernon Dursley is actually the main character for the first chapter of Harry Potter. He's the most boring, strictly ordinary, very bland character you could ever come across. What I realised was, Vernon Dursley. He's a boring character and that's a boring name. It actually sounds boring. I mean, listen to it, it's almost a mumble. Vernon Dursley. To me, that epitomizes his character perfectly. As I said in the video, he's pretty much allergic to anything that isn't strictly normal, but Vernon Dursley is almost onomatopoeia. His name enhances his character, it contributes to who he is. It's not just a random name that the author picked from a baby names website. What? We've all been there, you gotta get names from somewhere. Once I figured out that Vernon Dursley's name isn't exactly as meaningless as it seems, it got me thinking about other names in the Harry Potter universe and whether any more of them had this reflective quality. And I started thinking about probably my favorite name in the entire series. Not my favorite character, he's awful, but my favorite name, Cornelius Fudge. Now, if you're not familiar with the Harry Potter series, in my opinion, I don't think this character could be named any better Here's how it works out for me. Cornelius. For me this sounds like an upper class person, it's not a commonly used name anymore, and to me it feels old fashioned and kind of pompous and uppity. The name itself probably comes from the Latin word for horn, so for me his name means pompous noise. Then fudge. My immediate thought was actual fudge, but I don't think old Cornelius is supposed to remind us of our favourite sugary treat. I think his surname is from the verb to fudge, or as Google describes it, to present or deal with something in a vague or inadequate way especially so as to conceal the truth or mislead. If you have read the series or watched the movies, this probably jumps right out at you, because Cornelius Fudge, as Minister for Magic, deals with one particular quite large plot point in Harry Potter very inadequately indeed. He's not back. Very inadequately indeed. I sound like him. By this point, I'm well into analysis mode, and I'm right down the rabbit hole of character names. I'm thinking about other series and wondering whether I can find examples of character names that have this quality to them in, in those as well. And if I could, then maybe I might be able to replicate it or figure out how it works for my own character names. So I turned to one of my favorite books in the universe, No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy. The first character I thought of, probably because he's terrifying, is Anton Chigurh. He's otherworldly, he's an outsider, he's totally unpredictable. He seems to walk the earth at a different pace from everybody else and in a totally different direction. So how does his name add to his character? It's all about that unknowable, unpredictable quality that he has. When I looked up the etymology of the name Anton, I quickly discovered that it's impossible to narrow down where a person might come from if they have that name, because it's a common name in a lot of countries. So his first name really gives us no clue about who he is. What about his surname then? What about Shigur? Sugar. No, Sugar. Yeah. When I looked up that name, it seems like Cormac McCarthy almost invented it himself. There's no famous Sugars in history and there's nothing really to draw upon. It doesn't seem to come from any particular country or culture, so that's just as unknowable as Anton is. Again, this enhances this unknowable, unpredictable, unstoppable shadow of a character. Sugar is an unstoppable force that nobody sees coming, and I think his name is a big reason for that. If he was called Bob Williams, yeah, not quite as terrifying. 
Before I explain how you can create names like this for your own characters, I want to talk about one more great example of this technique, and it's from the Hunger Games series. I could have picked pretty much any name from the Hunger Games series, they're all loaded with meaning and they all have this reflective quality to them, but one of them stood out to me in particular, Effie Trinket. She's a well-spoken, apparently upper-class and quite shallow character if we focus on the first book. She loves the finer things in life and the pursuit of that kind of thing, so how does her name get that across? Why does her name contribute to that? Effie is apparently a name with Greek origin and it means pleasant speech. This is exactly Effie Trinket. She's so well-spoken that sometimes she even seems like she has a British accent. I'm sure we've all heard how she says, may the odds be ever in your favour. Then trinket, which means a cheap or a valueless piece of jewellery or something shiny and low value. I think that pretty much reflects her character at the start of the series, her materialistic side before her character grows a little bit. Her name definitely has this reflective quality. It brings a picture of the character into your mind. Anyway, enough examples. I sat down and I figured out a bunch of things to consider when you're naming a character and you want to make their name really work for them. I'll go through how to do it, then I'll prove it works, or at least it did for me. It's all about how names sound, obviously, and this came to me when I was thinking about Vernon Dursley's name. It's all about vowels and consonants, syllables and sounds. Vernon Dursley's name sounds boring because it has no bite. It's dominated by vowel sounds and it's kind of curvy and edgeless. So by that rationale, a name with more consonants in it should sound a bit more harsh and a bit more sharp. Sirius Black, for example. That's cool then, softer characters, more vowels, harder characters, more consonants. And then I got to thinking about the length of the names. Short names seem to have more impact. They tend to reflect strong, not that complex and confident characters. For example, Jon Snow. Longer names, I think, indicate a bit more complexity of character. For example, Albus Dumbledore. It's almost like there's meaning hidden in all of those extra syllables. Albus means white and Dumbledore is an old English word for bumblebee. Jon Snow means Jon Snow. All of this is obviously not an exact science. I mean, it's not a science at all, in fact, it's more of an approach, but from a writer's perspective, I do think it works. Here's what happened when I tried it, but I'll let you be the judge of whether you think the name ultimately works or not. Here's my character profile. It's pretty brief, but it's enough to go on. My character's a grifter, a kind of con man of no fixed abode. He travels through the night across the country, ripping people off. He cheats at gambling matches. He only cares about himself and making money, so what might be a good name for him? Vic Gainsbridge. You may disagree and that's fine, but here's why it works for me. Vic is short for Victor. He's a cheat and a con man, but Victor itself would have been a little bit too obvious. Gains as in to gain. This refers to both his actual winnings and his objectives in life. Bridge, I just wanted something travel related in there because he's a drifter, wanderer type character. The name's pretty consonant heavy, meaning a sharper or harsher character and giving a sense of toughness. The name itself is only three syllables, so it's short and indicates maybe there's not that much depth to good old Vic's character. Next time you need a character name, maybe try this. Think about who your character is, first of all, because that's probably something you already know and then use these techniques to figure out a name that really complements them. This can lead to a reader immediately forming an impression of what that character is like in their mind, and if you write sci-fi or fantasy, you can probably get really creative with this, but it does work for other genres as well. My aim with this channel is to support other writers and to help them develop their writing along with me. I wanna help you tell your best story, so if that sounds like it might be useful to you, consider hitting the subscribe button for new videos like this every week. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.